Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of the Rantables Wrestling Podcast. I know it's been a while since the last one. Uh, I'll admit I've been a little bit out of the loop the last couple of months. Um, but I'm back because a couple of days from now, this being Friday, November 11, 2011, uh, this Sunday is going to be a pretty monumental event in uh, the world of independent wrestling as Jakar is putting on their first ever iPay-Per-View. And, of course, it being their first iPay-Per-View, they're going to be crowning their first ever grand champion. And with that, as well as a bunch of other awesome matches, I thought it was appropriate that I would do a quick preview and a picks podcast for you all. So, uh, if you are interested in purchasing this show, which I uh, honestly, I I recommend that you do, just because uh, it's it would be great to support Chikara and independent wrestling in in, uh, in general. Uh, you can go to ChikaraPro.com, or you can also go to uh, Go Fight Live. I think it's GFL.TV. You can order the show. It's fifteen dollars. I know for some people, I know in this economy, it's uh, fifteen bucks might mean the difference between eating for you know a few days or not. But honestly, I think that this show will be well worth the price of admission. Uh, so. If you haven't already gotten your your uh, if you haven't already purchased your your ticket or whatever you want to call it, I recommend that you do it. If you if you've been planning on it but you haven't, then do it now because the show is only going to be on in a couple of days. So do that. I've already done it and uh, I'm looking forward to it very much. So I'm going to go run down the card and I'm going to give picks as well as kind of a just an overall preview, I suppose. So. Uh, first off, there's an announcement that's going to be made by uh, the Funky Pharaoh Amasis, who will be revealing the future of the Osirian portal, as is said on Shakara's website, ShakaraPro.com. Now, uh, for those of you who didn't who didn't really know about or what happened, I guess Amasis was involved in a pretty serious uh, automobile accident or something several months ago, and uh, from what I heard, he actually retired from the business. Uh, because the injury was that severe, but uh, I suppose that he's going to come back for one day, one night, what have you, and I guess he's just going to uh, tell us what's going to happen. I mean, uh, pretty much at this point, the only person in the portal who's still wrestling in Chikara is Ophidian, as we have not seen Jonathan Gresham, or also known as uh, Hirakon, have not seen him in a while. And uh, I, I I don't know if that means that he's done with Chikara or if that just means that he's hurt or if he's just kind of grown out of the character. Uh, I hope not, although I do kind of wish that he was still Jonathan Gresham, not Hirakon, admittedly. But anyway, uh, this should be interesting, I'm sure. And uh, it's too bad because I don't... Uh, Ophidian is not on the card. Um, but we'll see, I suppose. Uh, let me see. Next up, we have a uh, a sort of a dark match, or pre-show match, that's going to be free on Chikara's Ustream page, uh, which you shall check out. I'm not sure what the website is. It's probably Ustream.com slash Chikara or Chikara Pro or something. They're going to have El Generico taking on Jigsaw in a one-on-one match. Now, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this before on the podcast, since I've only done two and I don't remember that far back, but uh, El Generico is one of my favorite uh, independent wrestlers, or one of my favorite wrestlers overall. Um, he's just supremely entertaining. He's incredibly funny. He's really talented. He's very athletic. Uh, he's really kind of the total package at this point. And uh, I will enjoy any match that he's in, honestly. And uh, I think Jigsaw also. Um, he's also he's also a lot of fun in the ring to watch. Uh, I haven't actually gotten a chance to watch the any of the three most recent uh, Chikara shows. I just actually, their most recent one, which came out a couple of weeks ago, was finally released on, on DVD yesterday uh, through Smart Mark Video, which uh, you should get for 15 bucks. I just ordered mine, so it probably won't be here until after the, uh, the iPay-Per-View is over. But that's okay. Point is, uh, I did get to see one match from one of those shows, and that was Jigsaw taking on uh, Oberian. And uh, it was a it was a good like uh, seven or eight minutes match. It was just a it was a good ha- fast high uh, fast paced high energy match, a lot of fun. 
And uh, I think these two will work well, really well together, I should say. Um, I think their styles complement each other, and uh, really, you can't go wrong with an El Generico match a- a- anywhere. So, uh, who am I going to pick? You know, I don't think Generico's won a match in Shikara this year, so I think now is his time at this point. I would love to see Generico in Shikara more often. I know he's a really busy guy working with um, Ring of Honor and uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla and just working all over the world, but... Uh, I definitely would love to see him as more of a, a semi-regular competitor, and I think that a win would really push him in the right direction towards becoming a semi-regular competitor in Chikara. So I'm picking El Generico to win over Jigsaw. Next we have a rematch from King of Trios from this year. I believe it was Night 2, with uh, Colt Cabana taking on Archibald Peck. Marchie Archie. Yes, he's finally back. I don't, I don't know if he is in any of the last three shows, but it's been a while since I've seen him in the ring. Uh... But I definitely look forward to it because... Uh, oh, no. He was in Young Lions Cup. Never mind. I'm sorry. My memory is finally coming back to me. Uh, but uh, Marchie Archie was at uh, the Young Lions Cup. And, of course, he delighted because he's Marchie Archie. He's, uh, he's a great comedy wrestler. And uh, he's going up against one of the other... One of the best comedy wrestlers in the world in Colt Cabana. So it should be... I'm hoping that they have more time than they did in their uh, their King of Trios match, I think, which is only five or six minutes long. I can't remember. But... Uh, I hope that they get a decent amount of time to entertain the crowd. Both guys can go. Both guys are hilarious in the ring. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, Again, I, I'm saying the same thing about Cabana that I'm saying about Generico. Uh, I would love to see Cabana as, uh, you know, more often than I do right now in Chikara. He's, he's been in, I don't know, four or five shows, I think. Uh, it was great to see him at the a couple, I think it was, was it Chikara Source Rex? Oh, God, I can't remember. Uh, when he was uh, working with uh, Qu- Mike Quackabush and Johnny St. and Johnny Kidd, um, I'd like to see him back more often. Um, I know he's busy traveling the world and uh, recording his podcast and being awesome, but uh, I think it would be, it would help the, the product as a whole to have more names like uh, Colt Cabana uh, showing up every, every couple of months or so. So, uh, I'm going to pick Cabana to win, because I don't think he's won a match in Chikara this year either. Uh, so there you go. I'm picking two guys who haven't won yet in Chikara this year to win uh, at the iPay per view Next up, we have a single showdown between Sarah Del Rey and Jacob Hammermeyer. I'm not calling him what he wants to be called, because that's what you have to do when you're uh, encountering the heels. Yes. Uh, so uh, if you've been following the story, I hope you have. If you haven't, uh, Sarah basically defected from the... BDK a couple of months ago after getting disrespected by Claudio Castagnoli and Aries and now she's on her own and she's super over with the crowd all the time and honestly at this point I think it's unless there are going to be shenanigans involved in this match I'm pretty sure Sarah's just going to beat the crap out of Jacob Um, everyone's hoping for it to happen I'm certain of that um Although I wouldn't put it past the BDK to have to either have uh, Derek Sabato as the ref, or to have uh, whichever ref it is working this match get knocked out or something or distracted and have, as I said before, have shenanigans. Uh, you know, have Tersis or someone show up and and knock out Sarah or something. I'm hoping that's not going to happen. And I know that I'm kind of picking a lot towards the faces, but I'm going to be doing that probably through the rest of the card. Uh, So I'm picking Sarah Del Rey to win. But it wouldn't surprise me if there were shenanigans involved. Uh, Next up we have one of the three, I guess you could say, grudge matches of the night. This one, the first one, is Green Ant taking on Tursus for the, I believe, third time, if memory serves, which, as you've been listening to this podcast, uh, you know it hasn't been serving me very well. But... um, I believe these two had a they had a confrontation at King of Trios. Did no, they maybe not. I don't know. Point is, uh, these two have been embroiled in a uh, in an angle for several months, and um, I think that it's finally time to uh, end it, since this is the end of the season. And uh, I think it would be nice if a couple of the uh, the, the the feuds in Shikara kind of wrap up and everyone moves on to uh, see what happens next season. So, you know, it's it's tough to pick this because I think each guy has won one match against each other, if that makes any sense. 
I think Green Ant has won one match and Tercis has won one, but again, don't don't quote me on that. You can look it up for yourself. I should look it up on myself by, for myself, uh, but I don't do research because I'm lazy. Uh, Green Ant obviously has a huge hill to climb. No pun, uh, pun perfectly and deliciously intended. Why not? Uh, Tercis has definitely improved in the ring. I think uh, with the absence of uh, Brody Lee over the last few months, which uh, I kind of wish he'd come back, but you know if he's if he's moved on, he's moved on, whatever. Uh, but Tercis has kind of turned into the semi-agile big man at this point in the company. Uh, the other guy, of course, being Willie Richardson, but he's not really there too often. So we get Tercis, who's been throwing out drop kicks and moon salts uh, several times, which was pretty epic, quite honestly. To see a a guy almost the size of Vader tossing up moon salts, which uh, you don't see very often anymore. Uh, Green Ant is definitely a great up and comer uh, for being around for just a couple of years. He's definitely improved. You can see that. Uh, you could see that over the last from 2010 through 2011. He's gotten better. He's also gotten a lot better uh, on the mic. Although they don't have microphones really, but uh, he's gotten better at promos. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, since he's really the only one in the colony who does any talking. So he's gotten a lot better. Uh, Tercis has definitely improved over the last year, year and a half. Um, this last year when uh, I saw him like a King of Trios, I was terribly unimpressed. But he's definitely gotten a lot better. And uh, this should be a really, it should be a good match. Uh, I hope that these two just have a true just knockdown, drag out fight. And uh, as I'm probably going to be doing... Uh, because this is the end of the season, I'm going to be picking a lot towards the 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 babyface side. So for this match, I'm going to pick Green Ant for a bit of an upset, I suppose you could say, uh, in the win over Tursus. And uh, this feud should probably come to a close after this after this uh, match. But it's been a good feud, and uh, I've enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to their final match. Hopefully, if not, you know, whatever. But I think it should be a good time to end, if anything. Uh, next up, we have our second grudge match. The, as it says on Chikara Pro on their uh, their event page, it says, One final confrontation. Gregory Iron taking on Icarus. Now, um, over the last few months, it feels like Icarus has kind of distanced himself a little bit from the rest of Fist, from uh, Chuck Taylor and Johnny Gargano. And... Uh, Again, this is the one thing I have not found out, and I'm kind of glad about it because I haven't uh, no I, I haven't seen the show whether or not uh, Taylor and Gargano are still the campeona, campeones de parejas um, if they won or if they lost it to uh, Daisuke Hirata and Atsushi Katoge from uh, Osaka Pro. Uh, I'm probably going to watch that either today or tomorrow uh, at some point. Uh, but anyway, point is, it feels like Icarus is kind of kind of a uh, becoming more of a singles guy and that uh, Taylor and Gargano are going their own way. But, uh, I mean, yeah, they're still fist, but Icarus is kind of trying to become a singles guy, it feels like at this point. Like maybe he's going to get kicked out of fist and or something. I don't know. It would be interesting to see uh, Gran Akuma return at some point uh, and kick Icarus out of fist and then join up with Taylor and Gargano. But you never know. Uh, Gregory Iron has been on the rise a lot over the last year or so. Uh, ever since he was in um, Young Lions Cup 2010, uh, everyone took notice. And in Young Lions Cup, I was I was honestly expecting him to go a lot further in Young Lions Cup this year. Uh, unfortunately, he did not. Um, but at this point, I think he's kind of destined for greatness. Uh, so, again, I'm once again picking on the side of the baby faces. I'm going to pick uh, Gregory Iron to defeat Icarus and hopefully become a more, again, these are guys that I'm hoping to become more, uh, more, what I call it, semi-regular competitors in the company. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to see Greg Iron more often than we are right now, which was only about three or four times this year. Not necessarily every show. But every couple of months, maybe. F four, five, six times a year, maybe. That's that's my hope. Uh, okay, so now we've got a tag team contest with two teams that both have two points towards uh, championship gold. 
we have uh, the colony, Fire Ant and Soldier Ant, taking on Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks. Now, um, I would say a couple of years ago, I think I said this the last time uh, I had a podcast, but I might be wrong. I don't know. You can check on it. You can visit uh, the second episode or the first episode, whatever. Uh, But when I first saw the Young Bucks, I was not really uh, impressed with them. I felt like they were just kind of nothing but spot monkeys. And I have to say that when I saw... When, what I've seen of them in Chikara this year, they've definitely gotten a lot better. They are, they're, they're still a bit of the spot monkey, but they've definitely evolved their style. They've definitely gotten a lot better with, uh, with, with more in regards to psychology and in-ring work rather than just doing the, the flippy, the flippy, silly stuff that I, f- I feel like they used to do a lot. Um, and I, I I approve of that, and I think that having the Young Bucks uh, again would provide uh, some some name recognition that I think Chikara not necessarily has been desperate to need, but I definitely feel like the more name recognition they get, the more people are going to buy their stuff, and the you know the more successful it will be, which is what I want for them and for pretty much any other. Um, pretty much any independent wrestling promotion at this point. So uh, we have the King of Trios, two-thirds of the King of Trios from 2011 taking on uh, Nick and Matt Jackson. And uh, this is going to, you know, I- I'm looking forward to this match a lot. Um, both teams are seasoned. Both teams have been wor- have been working together for years and years. Um, really, I'm... Every match on this on this card is is really strong, just top to bottom, and uh, I guess that's what you have to do with an eye pay per view. So um, it's tough to just tough to choose who's going to win this match. Uh, I feel like uh, the Colony should have had more chances uh, to become the the tag team champs, the campeon the campeones de parejas, since they are the king of trios, the kings of trios. I don't know what to call them. But, uh, well, I suppose, uh, being a, being the king of trios is, uh, as much of an honor as being the tag champs. So, um, again, I'm picking guys who are kind of out of the, uh, not necessarily raised from the company, but, uh, are kind of coming into the company more and more, and, uh, hopefully we'll be, they'll be around more often. I'm going to pick the Young Bucks to win. And if they're... Fa- I don't doesn't really matter if they're going to face Fist or Katoga and Harada. Uh, when they have that match, it's going to be, it's going to be good, no matter what. Um, so maybe we'll see... Uh, maybe we'll see the Colony doing something else at some point. They're still King of Trios for another five months or so. So uh, maybe they'll get something else over the next couple of months. Let's see. We'll hope. All right. Uh, next up we have... Our third grudge match, a uh, no disqualification tag team war between the Spectral Envoy, uh, Ultramantis Black, and Hollow Wicked, taking on the last remnants of the BDK, Aries and Tim Dons. Um, now I I did I did watch briefly the uh, the most recent High Noon report, which you can see on YouTube, or on Chikara.com or Chikarpro.com, uh, that uh, the the uh, lovely Jesse McKay, who was introducing the match, mentioned that this was a Lucha de Apuestas match, which, if it is, uh, has got to mean something that I didn't hear about, that it might mean like a mask versus career or something. I, I really don't know what it is. If it is a Lucha de Apuestas match, um, that adds a new wrinkle into the match, honestly. Um, before she said that, I thought it might, that there was a, there was a distinct possibility that a uh, that the BDK would come out on top, but I honestly can't see Ultramantis or Hollow Wicked unmasking or anything like that uh, at this point in their careers. Um, Mantis maybe because I, I don't know if he's necessarily nearing the end of his career, but he's definitely. Um, I think he's getting worn down at this point. Uh, I think Hollow Wicked's got a while left, but uh, Mantis, I don't know. I, I'd love to see Mantis. Uh, Kind of maybe if he gets behind the uh, behind the, uh, the, the the commentary mic full time, uh, I'd love to see that because Mantis is 
really hilarious. He's he he always hams it up, and he's always a ton of fun to listen to. Um, but he's also fun in the ring. So uh, I don't actually know if this is a, a lucha de apuestas match. If it is, I have to pick the special envoy. If it's just well, I don't know. I mean, no disqualification. That leans in the favor of the BDK because they still have Tersus, they still have uh, Jacob. I don't know if they have Delirious still uh, because you know I didn't, I haven't watched the last two or three shows. I don't know if uh, if he's converted. But on the other hand, uh, Ultramantis, they have Frightmare, they have Crossbones, so it's really kind of a it's a pick 'em, honestly. Uh, but if it, if it is in fact a Lucha de Apuestas match, I'm not going to pick against the Spectral Envoy because I don't think they're going to unmask. Uh, this should be uh, as uh, good old JR termed it. Uh, this should be bowling shoe ugly, but it should also be a hell of a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And as usual, I'm picking towards the side of the good guys. I'm picking the Spectral Envoy to win. And uh, maybe, hopefully, eradicate the BDK once and for all. Um uh, now, the final match, of course, is the one that everyone's been looking forward to, is the final match in the 12 Large Summit to determine Chikara's first uh, singles grand champion. And it's going to be the last of a dying breed, the War King, Eddie Kingston, taking on the Master of a Thousand Holds, Lightning Mike Quackenbush. Now, I don't think any... Indie, independent wrestler has had as good of a last two years as Eddie Kingston, quite honestly. He's had some truly epic encounters with the likes of Christopher Daniels, Brian Danielson, Tommy Dreamer, El Generico, Homicide. He's just He has fought them all, and he has won nearly all of them. I think his only loss this year has been to Claudio Castagnoli back in February, I want to say, which was, of course... Uh, one, it was, he lost it under dubious uh, circumstances, uh, which, to anyone who doesn't know what I mean, uh, means uh, Claudio wrapped a steel. Claudio wrapped some chain around his arm and uppercut Eddie Kingston in the face, and that knocked him out. Uh, but Kingston has been on a uh, war path, to be quite honest, and he is pretty much primed to win the Grand Championship. Um, I, to me, I feel like Quackenbush was probably not going to be the first person, the first choice to take on Eddie Kingston. I feel like had Claudio not signed with WWE a few months ago, that he would be in Quackenbush's place, so that we could have one final match between Kingston and Castagnoli, and finally have Kingston uh, exact his revenge on Claudio after. God, how long has it been? Two years? Uh, but things go the way they go. And uh, Claudio signed with WWE. Uh, so he was pretty much prevented from finishing the 12 Large Summit and uh, participating in the Grand Championship. But you know what? I think if anyone deserves to be in this match... It's the guy who founded the company n nearly 10 years ago. Uh, Mike Quackenbush has really, I feel like he's put his heart and his soul and blood, sweat, and tears into this company. And it's really, really just been such a spectacular product over the last um, the last couple of years. Um, so what better way to cap off the year... Uh, as well as crown the first grand champion than by taking the creator and the lead trainer of Shakara and pit him against one of his students and one of the guys who's been on one of the hottest streaks in all of independent wrestling over the last couple of years. Uh, this is going this has match of the year written all over it. Match of the year candidate at least, I suppose. Um, it's going to be tough to... Uh, there There have been some really spectacular matches, both in... Uh, mostly in independent wrestling, but there have been a couple of really good um, mainstream wrestling, I guess you could say, matches um, over the last year. But this is really going to be... This has to be an epic show. Uh, if you saw Eddie Kingston taking on Fire Ant, 
in uh, September. Yes, yeah, September. Um, I mean, that was that was ridiculous as it was. So this match has to be so much better than that. And I think these two, they have such a contrast in styles, but I think that's going to work to their advantage because Quackenbush really is an all-around spectacular in-ring uh, in-ring worker. He's one of the best in the world, I think. Uh, Kingston is unparalleled when it comes to wrestling psychology, except for maybe The Undertaker. Um, but I think Kingston's one of the best in the world at this point. Um, these two, really, I, I, I am looking forward to this. Uh, I, I don't think I've looked forward to a match this much in a long time. Who's going to win? I haven't picked against Eddie Kingston yet this year. And I don't think, you know, he's only lost the one match, I think. He's only lost the one match to Claudio. So it would be foolish to pick against Eddie Kingston. He deserves this title. Probably more than anyone else uh, in the company. So who's going to be the Chikara's first grand champion? Eddie Kingston. Well, there you have it. That is a preview and picks, my preview and picks, for Chikara's high noon pay-per-view. Again, and I don't refer to Chikara, I should emphasize that, but I would like to. But uh, if you do want to order the show, if you want to watch the show, go to ChikaraPro.com or GFL.TV. You can order it from there. I think you can order it. They mostly go through PayPal and that kind of stuff. So it's $15. Again, I know for some of you that might be a lot of money, but... You should, if you have the money, if you have the resources, and if you're interested, even if you're not interested, if you just kind of want to see what the hell I'm talking about, you should get this show, because outside of King of Trios, there probably won't be a better show this year. So I recommend getting it, and uh, I'm pretty sure since it's an eye pay-per-view, you don't have to watch it on Sunday. You can probably watch it sometime over the next month or so. I, I think that's how eye pay-per-views work on GFL. I'm not sure. But I think it is. So I think you should watch it. I think you should give Chikara as... We should help give Chikara as many uh, pay-per-view buys as possible just so they are able to give us... continue to give us the product that they have been giving us for the last nearly 10 years. So with that being said, thank you for joining me for Episode 3 of the Rentables Wrestling Podcast. And I will actually be back relatively soon as compared to the last couple of shows. I'm going to be back probably Sunday afternoon, or possibly, if I really feel lazy, Monday, with uh, a review of High Noon, and a look forward, maybe a look forward, to Chikara's uh, year-end bonus shows, if you want to call them that. Their three-day Joshi Mania tour, which should turn out to be a truly epic three days. And uh, I probably won't preview it, but uh, maybe I'll do that later on. We'll see. So, uh, again, thank you for joining me, and I will see you later. At pay-per-view, they're going to be crowning their first-ever grand champion. And with that, as well as a bunch of other awesome matches, I thought it was appropriate that I would do a quick preview and uh, picks podcast for you all. So, uh, if you are interested in purchasing this show, which I uh, honestly I I recommend that you do, just because uh, it's it would be great to support Chikara and independent wrestling in in, uh, in general. Uh, you can go to ChikaraPro.com, or you can also go to uh, Go Fight Live. I think it's GFL.TV. You can order the show. It's fifteen dollars. I know for some people. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of the Rantables Wrestling Podcast. I know it's been a while since the last one. Uh, I'll admit I've been a little bit out of the loop the last couple of months. Um, but I'm back because a couple of days from now, this being Friday, November 11th, 2011, uh, this Sunday is going to be a pretty monumental event in uh, the world of independent wrestling as Jakara is putting on their first ever iPay-Per-View. And, of course, it being their first that severe. But uh, I suppose that he's going to come back for one day, one night, what have you. And I guess he's just going to uh, tell us what's going to happen. I mean, uh, 
pretty much at this point, the only person in the portal who's still wrestling in Chikara is Ophidian, as we have not seen Jonathan Gresham, or also known as uh, Hirakon, have not seen him in a while. And uh, I, I, I don't know if that means that he's done with Chikara, or if that just means that he's hurt, or if he's just kind of grown out of the character. Uh, I hope not, although I do kind of wish that he was still Jonathan Gresham. I know in this economy it's uh, 15 bucks might mean the difference between eating for you know a few days or not, but honestly I think that this show will be well worth the price of admission. Uh, so if you haven't already gotten your, your uh, if you haven't already purchased your your ticket or whatever you want to call it, I recommend that you do it if you if you've been planning on it, but you haven't, then do it now because the show's only going to be on in a couple of days. So do that. I've already done it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it very much. So I'm going to go run down the card, and I'm going to give picks as well as kind of a just an overall preview, I suppose. So uh, first off, there's an announcement that's going to be made by uh, the Funky Pharaoh Amasis who will be revealing the future of the Osirian portal, as is said on Shakara's website, shakarapro.com. Now, uh, for those of you who didn't who didn't really know about or what happened, I guess Amasis was involved in a pretty serious uh, automobile accident or something several months ago. And uh, from what I heard, he actually retired from the business uh, because the injury was 